and this is section three of Mastering Qt Programming, which covers interacting with the web. So let's go ahead and get started with introducing Qt Web Engine. So in this video, we're gonna look at what the Qt Web Engine is, look at the Web Engine architecture before finally covering some features and implementation. So first off, let's talk about what the Qt Web Engine is real quick. Web Engine, according to the documentation, provides functionality for rendering web content. This means that we can drop the web into our applications. What really makes this so powerful is that we can embed content from the web even if the platform that we're developing for doesn't have a native web engine. Web Engine uses Chromium in the background, the same technology that Google Chrome uses to display the web. That means for browser compatibility issues, if it works in Chrome, it works in Qt. Awesome. So code-wise, how do we implement this module? Well, the Web Engine module is broken up pretty logically. So the best way to figure out what we can do is to take a tour of the module real quick. Now, we haven't talked much about the difference between mobile and desktop coding since we've been primarily focused on desktop up to this point, but Qt actually has two different programming languages. The core language is C++, but Qt has a specific language to help write mobile code. The breakdown isn't clean, but the main difference is that widgets, and the associated code for them, use C++, where mobile-specific code uses QML to implement the user interface. We can actually see this breakdown in the web engine architecture. The widget section on the left here is specifically for desktop, while in the center, the Qt web engine is actually QML and for mobile. And the web engine core contains common code for both. Now, if you're wondering what the far right one is, the web engine process, this actually contains a code for page rendering and JavaScript execution. These are separated from the GUI into this process. Now, since we're going to focus on desktop here, let's look specifically at the architecture of widgets. Here's the widget class breakdown. A view at the top is the top level widget. It can have multiple pages, which each has their own distinct history, actions, and profiles. Lots of power here to make real custom user interactions. And just for reference, here's the QML example. It's very similar to the widgets, but note that the page is missing here from the previous section. It's actually integrated directly into the view. So what kind of features does the web engine module have? Well, Qt lists these features here specifically. A couple of interesting ones that I noted are full screen, which can be used to full screen YouTube videos, for example. Print to PDF, which can be useful for scripting. Spell checker, which you don't realize how irritating it is not to have spell checker until it's gone. And the view source or dev tools, because imagine how difficult it would be to implement those features yourself. So where would we use this module? Or what specific implementations can we use it for? Well, frankly, there's a lot of code that gets written every day specifically for the web. One possibility if you need to develop a large application is to drop a web browser in the middle of your application and leverage something that is already ready for the web. Another common example would be if you're building an application for a business and there's a service that's only provided by the web and you want to integrate that service into your application. The last common, but perhaps not talked about frequently example would be scripting or programmatically printing out web pages. Common accepted answer to script out a bunch of web pages into PDF files is to use the web to print function in Qt. I've specifically considered using this feature to help keep track of research, as it'd be relatively easy to hit a button, save a web page, and put it in a specific file directory based on the research topic, for example, which would be super useful. But for now, we've successfully covered the features and some implementation ideas for Web Engine, the architecture, and discuss what Web Engine is.